Hey everyone, as you may or may not know, I am now living completely alone in solidarity. Yes, this is my first time in five years that I've been living alone. The first time I lived alone was when I quit college and moved to this like crappy apartment in Hollywood and completely failed and got sick within like a month and then I had to move back home with my dad. So I am finally out on my own, living with no roommates, and not that I don't love roommates, and not that I don't love my sister, and my mom, and my dad, and everyone I've always lived with, um, and boyfriends, bleh. <laughs> But I feel so great living on my own and I really, really recommend to all females and males out there that you guys at least live on your own for like a year before you get married or um, just to have it to yourself, just to kind of find yourself because here is why I'm living alone. So back in May, I was about this close to getting married. Yes, I was going to get married. That was going to be my life. Move in with him permanently, make my vow to God in front of God, in front of my husband and have babies and that was going to be my life. And I was really excited for it until it got close to actually happening and that I was becoming real because I thought this is what I always wanted to get married and have kids, especially being young and doing that. But I was a little nervous because I was afraid I was losing a bit of myself and that I was kind of scared that I was going to miss out on something. So I knew it wasn't right because I know when they say when you know it's right, it's right. And as much as I loved my boyfriend at the time, I just knew that is not what I wanted right now because I still had to grow and find myself. I'm 20, I was 24 years old. I just turned 24 and I'm still 24 years old. And I thought, you know what? I need to like find myself and I still wanted to date him and I still wanted to be with him, but just, you know, having a year at least to myself of moving, like living on my own. So, and I feel like I kind of just have myself together and really finding me and just knowing me and loving me. And then eventually I'll be able to marry if it's right with him. Um, marry him and just have it all work out perfectly and I'll be happy I can make him happy and everybody around me will be happy because I'm happy and I know and I love myself okay so let me just share you guys a little thing so if you guys decide to move out and you know live on your own there's a couple of things to expect so a lot of you might be going to college or something or just graduating college and you might have had a roommate or maybe you just want to live out on your own like I did at 18 and I was like ready to live on my own and I really was excited about it and I really was. The thing was I wasn't really prepared for living on my own. So this is what I'm going to help you guys with. I'm going to help you guys prepare for living on your own no matter what age you are. Hopefully you're 18 um, but maybe you'll be a little older like me like 24 but either way these will, tips will be helpful if you're thinking about living on your own or even just moving out of your parents house and living with someone else because these will apply to you as well. So when I first moved out on my own, I moved to Hollywood. I didn't know the area. I got an apartment off Craigslist, signed the lease via fax. I didn't even see the place, just signed the lease, sent the money, and went. Okay, so I was thinking Hollywood is where I want to be. That's where I want to live. It's going to be perfect. No, it was next to a liquor store. The pictures were so not even close to what it was, and the surrounding areas were all just bums and druggies, and it was awful, and I lived there. Okay, I said a month, but I lived there for actually about six months, and it was... You know, I was like, okay, well, I have rent, and I have my deposit, and I'll be able to make rent next month, and I'm good to go. But there are so many other expenses. That's the number one thing. So when you move out of your parents' house, or if you were in a situation where someone was taking care of you, or I don't know what it is, because I've lived with boyfriends who take care of me, and you just, like, don't expect it. Um, when you move out, there's going to be a ton of other expenses besides rent, okay? So you have the rent, obviously, but you also have the utilities, and your cable, and your internet, gas, electric. Um, some places you have to pay for your trash to be taken out all that crazy stuff. So make sure you know that it's going to be more. So I always added tacked on, well, I'm out here in LA, so I tacked on about an extra 500 a month above the rent for those. And also know you have to feed yourself. You have to get gas in your car. You have to take care of all that stuff. So I tacked on about another 300 bucks for that. So I was like rent plus 800 already. And then I would tack on about another 200 because, you know, maybe you want to go to the movies. Maybe you want to buy a new shirt. You know, maybe your phone dies. Like you have to have that like petty cash as I call it. So it's an extra 200. So right there, that's like an extra thousand on top of your rent. So let's say, okay, well out here, our rent is ridiculous. So like my first place was like a thousand bucks a month and that was crappy. That was like the bad part of town. Um, so it was a thousand bucks a month plus another thousand for all my expenses but I also had a car payment at the time which I really wasn't sure about how that was working and that's how I got into debt because I had to pay that off with my credit card so I had my car payment but I had my credit card too which I couldn't really pay off so I was paying about 150 bucks a month towards credit cards and all that stuff so you know realistically I was paying about 2500 a month because spending and all that other stuff like things that you don't expect, your hair, makeup, all that stuff you want or need, you know, that's just going to happen and you're going to have to sacrifice. Like for the first six months I didn't, I never bought anything, you know. I was just like trying to barely struggle and survive because I realized quick that money runs out and that brings me to my next point. So you have it all saved up. Most of the time you have a little bit of savings when you move out 
that goes really quick. So make sure when you're moving, you probably should have a job or something to kind of make sure you're getting income every month because I had just my savings with me and that's what I was going on. And granted, at the time when I was 18, I worked on the Greg Barrett show, which was great because I was getting you know, daily rates for, you know, TV work and all, which is was really awesome. But then it got canceled, and then that's where it all went downhill. Enter my boyfriend, enter us breaking up, enter me becoming a stripper and then spiraling out of control. So make sure you have a good monthly income, and you know it's pretty stable, and if not, you have like a backup. You have the savings as a safety net, so to speak. I would also, I also want to let you guys know that it can be really stressful when you first move out, especially if you're accustomed to having people do other stuff for you. Even when I was living with my sister, it's kind of embarrassing to admit, but she would like do the dishes, she would do like laundry because she was unemployed when I was living with her and she was just going to school, so she kind of had time during the day and she was doing all that stuff and I didn't really realize it. And, I, and when I lived with my mom, it was the same way. And when I lived, well, when I lived with my boyfriend, I would do it, but basically it would just stack up to a big pile and we'd take it to dry cleaning because that was just how it was. But you're going to be a little stressed when you first moved in. It's hard to get everything together, to get the electricity turned on, to wait for the cable and the phone, to get a couch, you know, to get furniture moved in, to get a situated, to get a custom. They say it takes about six months to actually feel like you're living in your place and that you can find everything and know where everything is at. So just, and also you have to do laundry and dishes and cooking and cleaning and carrying the groceries up all by yourself because we don't have an elevator in the place I live in. So I have to like literally carry the groceries from like one end of the building to the other and like go up like the, all these slides of stairs, which is great. I'm losing weight, but two, I was not expecting. Also, you share a washer and units most of the time if you're moving into an apartment. And so just prepare to have lots and lots of quarters around and be prepared for other people doing their laundry when you want to. Um, so just know you're going to be getting really good workouts when you live alone. Carrying those groceries up and laundry down is just a pile of fun, but and kind of on a little bit of a different note, besides financials and stressful, you know, living situation to surviving, um, also be prepared for being a little lonely at times. You know, I personally enjoy the quiet and the peace and my creating in my zone, but if you're not a creative person or you're really used to being with friends or your family, um, make sure you know people, make sure you get out in the areas, but make sure you're safe about it. Um, just be prepared for silence. Be prepared for being scared. I get scared all the time. And I'm like, what if someone breaks in? Or what if I see a ghost? Or what if there's a spider? Ah, there was a spider. Oh my gosh. I flipped out. Yep. I called my neighbor downstairs. I knocked but I, he came and it was great and also I had a little mini crisis about two weeks ago um, my water wouldn't turn off I was washing my face at like 10 30 at night and I was like turning and turning and turning and turning and I want to turn off and not only that but my place is a little older amenities so like it was kind of clogged and so it was like building up and I thought it was gonna flood the apartment down below me and I didn't have a maintenance after hours emergency number to call um, which you should probably get that too um, but I had to call my landlord thank goodness her grandson was there because um, it was gonna overflow and she's like I don't know what to do because she's an older lady and she's like I have arthritis and I don't know what to do I'm like I don't know what to do and he found a little switch below your water and you can just turn that off <laughs> which I didn't know so be prepared for all that stuff be prepared um get emergency contact numbers be at peace with yourself and um get a baseball bat in case someone makes it um yeah <laughs> I have a baseball bat beneath my bed. Um, also, make sure your area is very safe and you know the people around you. I would recommend getting into like a gated building, like where you have to have a security code or something to get in. That way you just feel safe and comforted. It's always good. Make sure you love the area you're in. You're going to probably be there for a year. Now, I know all this can be a little overwhelming and a little scary. And moving out on your own is a little scary, but... It's actually really fun and take it from me it's something I think everybody needs just to kind of know what it's like to be on your own and I think overall you appreciate everyone a little more I definitely appreciate having my family around a lot more I appreciate my boyfriend a lot more that's for sure like I love his company now I know that I really really like to be with him you know and and you just kind of appreciate it all more you appreciate having a companion you appreciate people's help you appreciate helping others you appreciate having people come over you appreciate just taking care of yourself taking care of your home and just making it thinking like I did this I'm functioning I'm surviving I'm living I'm flourishing I'm blossoming like yay on me I never thought this would happen at 14 years old if you would have told me that I was gonna have my own little apartment and I was gonna be playing little wifey to myself and just kind of doing whatever and eating Cheetos at midnight if I want and having a stripper pole in my living room I would not believe it and honestly it's not about feeling cool but it's just about feeling like yourself and just kind of having that moment and I in the long run I think it helps I think you appreciate everything a little bit more and I think you're a little more prepared for what life has to bring you so that's just my advice. Those are my tips if you want to live alone. If you don't want to live alone, that's fine too. Probably after this year, I'll be ready to be living with someone again because I'm always having people come over because I get a little lonely. But um, I think I'll probably have to have my own space, I think is what I need. But not this big of a space. But it's cute. It's fun.
And the best part about living alone is making your spare bedroom into a walk-in closet. Yeah, you can't really see, but I have a walk-in closet in here, which is really cool and something I always wanted. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys found it helpful. I love my fishies so much. Mm -hmm. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.